In this video, I'm going to talk about the entropy changes in the universe, and this corresponds to section 14.4 in your book. Okay, the first thing we need to think about when we are talking about the, uh, the entropy changes in the universe, right, our delta S of the universe. Now, what does the universe include? The universe includes the system and the surroundings. Okay, we learned this from last semester. System plus surroundings. Okay, now we have already talked about how to get to the delta S of our system, right? So we just take the standard entropy of our, re our products minus the standard entropies of our reactants. Of our products minus the standard the minus standard entropies of our reactants and that gets us to the overall entropy change of our of our uh, system. Now what about the entropy of our surroundings? Now remember, say for instance if you have a cup of hot water here, hot water, okay, and the, if it's not an insulated cup, right, the heat is just going to leave your system Right, the hot water is considered your system. Heat is going to leave your system and go into the surroundings. Now remember we talked about how a temperature change uh, will affect the entropy and a decrease in ten temperature will lead to a decrease in entropy of our system. But what about our surroundings here? Now our surroundings, if you have an increase in the temperature of your surroundings, that means you have an increase increase in the entropy of the surroundings. So you have the two together will help determine whether or not something is actually going to proceed. That is to say that the, like I wrote before, the delta S of your universe is equal to the delta S of your system and combined with the delta S of your surroundings. So the take home with this is, is that it's not enough to just know the entropy change in your system. You need to know what the entropy change in your overall surroundings will be to determine whether or not something will be spontaneous. Now how do we calculate the delta S of our surroundings or the entropy change of our surroundings? Well like I mentioned before, the entropy change of our surroundings will be affected by the heat that leaves the system. Now, what relationship do we have that makes heat relative to the energy? Well, enthalpy is exactly, is, is a factor that we have that we can use to determine uh, what the energy change in a system is, right? So the delta S of surroundings is directly proportional to the minus delta H of our system, okay? Now this negative sign right here, this negative sign essentially indicates that there is an increase in the entropy of our surroundings every time there is a negative delta H of the system, right? So an exothermic process. So an increase in delta S comes from an exothermic system. Now I do want to emphasize something. Note here that I have the delta S of our surroundings is proportional to the minus delta H of our system. Okay, so they are not talking about the same thing. It is talking about the heat leaving the system going into the surroundings and how that will affect the entropy. So if we're talking about the enthalpy, we also need to talk about the temperature, right? And the temperature is also proportional to, is inversely proportional to, excuse me, the delta S of our surroundings, okay? So it's 1 over T is proportional to the delta S of surroundings. If you combine the two, you actually end up getting to, let me see if I can squeeze it in here, delta S of our surroundings is equal to the minus delta H of our system over temperature. And if you look at the units, this actually makes perfect sense because remember our units for, for entropy are joules per kelvin mole, right? Now enthalpy was kilojoules 
per mole. And then if you divide that by temperature, you get to the Kelvin. So you get to Kelvin here to end up getting to, once you adjust kilojoules to joules, you end up getting to the units of entropy. Now combining the entropy change of your system with the entropy change of your surroundings, this actually leads us to the second law of thermodynamics, which essentially says that the universe is striving towards a higher entropy. Okay, so we have the second law, law of thermodynamics. That is to say that the delta S of our universe, if it's positive, this means that it's a spontaneous reaction. That is to say that the if the overall entropy change in your system combined with the overall entropy change of your surroundings is positive, that means that this, this whole reaction will be favored and um, favor increased spontaneity. Now let's go back and look at our universe, quote unquote universe, of our hot water, right? So we said this is our system, okay, and heat is leaving our system and going into our surroundings. Now if we take just this factor into account, our delta S of our system is decreasing, our delta S of our surroundings is increasing. Now what if those are the same magnitudes? Well it turns out that if you have the delta S of your universe is equal to zero, you're at equilibrium. That is to say that there's no driving force going one way or the other. Uh, and it's not spontaneous or non-spontaneous. It is simply at equilibrium.